Hey everybody, this is Dinosaur George. It's nice to be back again. I've been on the road all over the country. Uh, I've got a little bit of time off uh, between now and the beginning of the new year. So I'm gonna try to shoot a couple of these if I can. Uh, I might only have time to shoot one or two today, but then next week, this is December the 8th, I think is today's date. So um, between December the 17th and the first of the year, I think I've got a little bit of time off. So I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. So let's get into it. This episode, uh, the highlighted item is item 3065. This is an Oligocene dog called Hesperocyon. This is a neat little dude. He's a little tiny dog. You know, I've read a variety of different things about this dog. Some people believe it was arboreal, meaning that it lived in trees, and other people believe that it may have burrowed sort of the way a weasel or ferret does. Now, they've got an elongated body, so they look like they, they may have been capable of doing either one. Maybe they did both, I don't know. But uh, clearly, it's a very tiny little dog. So if you like dogs or you like wolves or anything like that, this is a neat little piece to add to your collection. He's in two pieces. He has the uh, skull and then the mandible. Uh, and uh, so he's really kind of cool. I think he's neat. He sells for $37.95. So he's not incredibly expensive. So if you want to add a complete skull to your collection, that little dog would be a good addition. Let's go. Logan from New York City, New York. Hello, Dinosaur George. Hello, Logan. I hope you've had a wonderful 2015. You know, Logan, this has been a very good year. I've, I've, been, I've been very pleased with it. Um, the business has been very good. Traveling too much, but uh, it's been good. Uh, I have two questions. What do you think of the likelihood of dinosaurs like Nanotyrannus, Raptor Rex, Taurosaurus, Anatotitan, Stygimoloch, Dracorex, Edmarcorex, Epanterius, and Saurophaganax? as being the same as other dinosaurs. Well, what do I think the likelihood is of that? Um, you know, from what I know, I've seen enough distinctive differences between each one of those that they should be considered their own species. I know there's a lot of debate that rages about uh, all these dinosaurs that you mentioned, and that's mostly because there's such limited evidence found. Um, I am not one who believes in this notion that animals morph into something distinctively different. Now we see it in fish, we see it in insects, and we see it in amphibians. But other than that, you do not see that sort of thing in the animal kingdom. And I think that when you have limited fossil evidence, then you have to rely on living animals as a window into the past. And I just simply do not see enough animals, be it bird, be it mammal, be it reptile, I don't see enough of those animals that morph dramatically to become something different. So I am of the opinion that when you have evidence, even though it may be limited, if it is different enough, from the other animal that they propose it to be, then I don't think that it is as likely. It's my guess. Okay, second question. I want to get into filming dinosaur documentaries when I'm older. What was it like filming Jurassic Fight Club? Did you like it? And what should I do to get into making documentaries? Thanks for answering my questions, DG. Logan, it's my pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to write to me. Did I like filming Jurassic Fight Club? Loved it. It was an incredible experience for me. I got to learn so much about the television industry. That's, that was amazing. I knew nothing about it. I got a chance to work with some incredible editors. I got to work with the animators. I got to work with the sound guys, the guys that did uh, special effects. Ew, it was just the coolest. Probably the greatest part for me was I was allowed to go behind the scenes in museums all over the United States and Canada, and I got to see some things that were simply remarkable. So I loved it. Now, as for you, what kind of advice would I give you? Um, one of the things you want to make sure to do is do as much research about your subject as you can. Don't rely on a handful of places to get your facts. Uh, one of the worst places to get your facts, unfortunately, is through some of the books that have been written. Now, there's some very good books out there, very good books. But most of the books that are written are not necessarily written by people who have expertise in the subject. 
They're just people that went out and researched things. And, and so if you don't truly know the facts, it's very easy to read a book and make the, make the assumption that whoever wrote that book must have done enough research. So I'll simply perpetuate whatever they said. You don't want to do that. You really want to look deep into your subject matter before you uh, go out and publish any documentaries about it. So that's my advice. All right, Denver from Los Angeles, California. Hey, Dinosaur George, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and I wish you the best. Thank you, Denver. My Thanksgiving was excellent. If this camera could pan back far enough, you would see the size of my stomach and know what a good Thanksgiving I had. But it can't pan back that far. <laughs> okay, my question is on the discovery of Dakota Raptor. I heard that he was found with multiple broken teeth. Since other raptors like Utah Raptor got into fights and lost their teeth with animals like Gastonia, could Dakota Raptor have gotten into a fight with a sub-adult T-Rex and got eaten and that's why so little bones were found? P.S. My favorite dinosaur is Acrocanthosaurus and you're my favorite paleontologist. Thank you, Denver. That's very kind of you. Uh, since I live in Texas, Acrocanthosaurus is near and dear to my heart. I love that dinosaur as well. And the reason why I say that is he's been found, his footprints are found all over Texas. And so I love that guy. Okay, Dakota Raptor is a relatively new discovery. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, things that I'm reading about it suggest it is the biggest raptor that's ever found. This thing is massive, looks incredibly powerful, and much, uh, much different than giant Utah Raptor in that it seems to be more gracile, meaning that it was probably faster, more slender. So it may have been a slash and dash kind of predator, meaning you rush in, you slash up your victim and you dash away and let the poor victim die. He may have been more like that rather than the Utah Raptors probably full on confrontational attack. Utah Raptor a little heavier duty. So the question about his teeth, uh, there is absolutely no way of knowing if the remains of Dakota Raptor that were found, the reason why they were so limited is because somebody else ate him. You have to remember, in order to be fossilized, generally it means that you're buried during a flooding situation where mud and silt, either your body is carried down river and buried in that, or it's buried by the actual water itself. The problem with that is moving water has a tendency to break apart animals, and so part of the carcass could have washed miles away from where these pieces were found. Uh, there's, there's no way to know for certain. Yes, these dinosaurs could lose their teeth and grow them back just like alligators and crocodiles. In fact, oftentimes, all you find as evidence of predation is the broken and shed teeth from whoever it was that did the killing. Now, is it possible that a subadult ate him? Anything's possible. Those animals live together at the same time, same place. But there is absolutely no way to know that with any certainty. But Denver, thank you so much for writing. Carson from Lubbock, Texas. Hey, DG, I have two questions. Do you think that T-Rex had feathers? And could a pack of raptors take down a fully grown T-Rex? Thank you for answering and have a good day. Thank you, Carson. I appreciate your good manners, buddy. Uh, I was just in Lubbock not too terribly long ago. I've never been to a place where the wind blows so much in my entire life. Man, that place, it's windy. Uh, but I like it very much, I love Lubbock. Uh, do I think T-Rex had feathers? Boy, you know, um, I, I continue to question whether something as large as a Tyrannosaurus Rex would have feathers, other than perhaps uh, feathers used for visual, uh, like for display. Was its body covered in feathers? But, you know, I was just talking about Dakota Raptor, and that's a big raptor. If the estimate of size is accurate, that's a pretty big dinosaur who clearly had feathers, at least had feathers on its arms. So um, I've always hesitated saying, yes, I think Tyrannosaurus Rex was feathered. But as more and more evidence tends to lean towards theropods being feathered, I certainly think the chances are more likely than that. Uh, one of my best friends, a guy named Don, Don Taylor. <laughs> Don hates this notion that, <laughs> that dinosaurs are feathered. And every time there's a new discovery that, that suggests a feathered dinosaur, I think Don just breaks his computer or throws the TV out the window. <laughs> Don and I are going to be the last two that are going to hang on that thinks T-Rex isn't feathered. I have a feeling Don will outlast me before I change my mind. Uh, as for could a pack of raptors take down a fully grown T-Rex? No. Tyrannosaurus Rex is simply too gigantic. He, he's too enormous. And dinosaurs especially predatory dinosaurs, are going to be very selective of who and what they fight. When you're a predator, you've got to be in a fight almost every day if you're gonna eat. 
you, you got to go out and hunt food, and that means confrontation. That means a great likelihood of being hurt. So fighting with something like something as big as a Tyrannosaurus Rex simply wouldn't make any sense to me because there's just too much to lose and there's really nothing to gain. Now, with the discovery of Dakota Raptor, it's a pretty big dinosaur and a pack of those certainly might be mean something that a Tyrannosaurus Rex may second guess getting into a confrontation with, but I don't think they would actually ever go to blows. One side or the other is going to wise up and get out of there. But those are good questions, Carson. All right, Jack from Long Island, New York, another New Yorker. Uh, do you do do you view raptors as long distance runners or high speed sprinters? Well, Jack, your timing couldn't be any better. I believe that raptors, depending on the species, had a totally different way of hunting. I think uh, Dromaeosaurus, Velociraptor, um, now Dakota Raptor, may have been better designed for long distance running, chasing their prey down, sort of the way wild dogs or wolves do today. Wild dogs and wolves are not as fast as cheetahs, but the intention isn't to chase it and catch it instantly. The, 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 the intention is to chase it till it simply is exhausted and it can't defend itself. I believe raptors may have employed that kind of hunting skill. Chase down your prey until it simply will not be able to run any further. Now, uh, and, I, and I base that off of the fact that that uh, raptors probably had the same breathing design as birds. And, and some of the discoveries, like I think it's Aerostion, is one of the ones that they, they found uh, uh, more evidence about the way a raptor or dinosaur breathes, at least predatory dinosaurs. It suggests that they could, they could uh, travel a great distance uh, without running out of air. Animals like mammals, like us, cheetahs have to be incredibly fast because they're simply, they cannot get enough oxygen into their blood system to keep everything working. That's why they've got to kill very quickly. Raptors, if they were more like birds, probably had the ability for uh, uh, a much greater distance in running. They would have been able, their stamina would have been incredibly high. And so I believe they did that. Now, some raptors, probably like Utah raptor and maybe even Deinonychus, I don't believe that they're going to run for great distances. Maybe Deinonychus could, but Utah Raptor, I don't believe he could. So Utah Raptor may have relied on a different hunting method. That is hide, ambush, run as fast as you can and hope you catch whatever it is very quickly. Because if you don't, then you got to give up in the f and, and you're not going to continue. The fight's over. You're not going to continue to chase it. So I think different raptors hunted in different ways. Finally, Asdrin. Oh, and by the way, you know, I, I can't believe I forgot to say this. I've got a little buddy named Oren. Oren, I, I, I enjoy your emails and I enjoy the little videos that your dad sends me. I want to tell you, Oren, I was so thrilled when I watched that video of you finding, that video of you finding your first fossilized shark teeth. Buddy, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. I am so proud of you, little man, for having that. And I know you are my biggest fan. Uh, and so I, I enjoy getting your emails. I enjoy hearing from you. And I'm sorry I didn't start off by telling you hello, but I just it just dawned on me right now. I'm getting very old, Oren, and my mind doesn't work as good as it used to. All right, Asdrin from Abalik, Kosovo. Uh, hello, DG, how are you? I hope you and your family are good. Asdrin, that's very kind of you. I hope you and all of your family are doing good too. I have one question. Who, win a who would win in a fight between Allosaurus and Torvosaurus? I'm sorry for this question because I know how hard it is to answer a question like this. I hope you're not mad at me. I wish you and your family good health and especially you, success, you your success in paleontology. P.S. Sorry for my terrible English. First, Asdrin, your English was perfect. I absolutely understood everything you read. Second, listen my friend, don't ever apologize for the question that you want to ask me. Don't ever apologize for that. I would rather answer questions like this a thousand times if that's the kind of questions that you and some of the other viewers want to ask. I know I said one time these questions are difficult because it's all speculation, but we still get so many of these kind of questions that it simply means that's what you and other people want to know. So never ever apologize for asking a question. I think it is an excellent question and I'm happy to answer it for you. So let's go. Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, wow. Now these guys inhabited the same environment, same time, so they definitely came in contact with each other. Who would win in a fight between the two? I base my answer on one thing, Esdrin. Uh, one, one thing and that's it. Um, 
there are considerably more fossil remains of Allosaurus found than Torvosaurus, way more. That suggests Allosaurus was a much more uh, successful dinosaur. And if these two dinosaurs lived at the same time in the same place, then clearly if one of them is much more successful than the other, then in my opinion, that means it had some sort of advancement that made it more successful. And so if these two dinosaurs came in contact with each other, my best guess is Allosaurus would win. Of course, I also base that on the fact that Allosaurus is my favorite dinosaur. <laughs> but, but truly, that is my opinion. It, it, even, if I didn't, even if I didn't love Allosaurus, I would base my opinion on that. All right, you guys, listen, uh, we're going in. We're gonna wipe the board clean of all the questions. We have got thousands. For those of you that have written so many times, again, I, I'm so sorry, but it just simply, my schedule simply doesn't allow me to do these as much as I wish I could. So uh, please, you guys, feel free to write. And I say guys, I am not talking about men. I'm not talking about males. I, when I say guys, I mean everybody. So you guys, go back, write us again. We're gonna begin, uh, like I said, I'm gonna film maybe one or two of these today. And then after this, um, I've gotta do a little bit of traveling. But then December 17th, I get home, and I'm home from December 17th through the 1st of January. And in that time, I'm gonna try to film as many of these as I can. I'll see you guys uh, on the next show. Thanks.